welcome to the show and welcome to Speak, Lead, and Grow podcast. My name is Alex. Dee Marie. And I'm Dee Marie. And we have a very special guest, uh, one of the trio for District 57, and that is Linda Patton. And Linda, how are you today? I'm doing very, very well. It's hot here, but it's nice and cool in my apartment. I think it's hot everywhere except in air conditioning. Yes. Uh, I'm on the East Coast, and it seems like somebody turned on the heat and they forgot to turn it off. But I'd love to thank you for taking the time to come and uh, chat with us here. And my, my first question is, how did you find Toastmasters? Like, how did you, I, I understand that, you know, you're a big wig and everything else, but how did you come to find Toastmasters? Alex, I have to be real honest with you. I went like this every time somebody said anything about Toastmasters. I had no desire ever to join Toastmasters, um, thought it was a cult, and just basically said, mm -mm, not me. And then in 2019, Cynthia Stott, who we all know and love, uh, said, I'm doing a speech craft. Would you coordinate the logistics? And I was do name tags, uh, check attendance, make sure that the rooms were all set up and that kind of thing, which I did. And then she said, I, gee, I need... Uh, a demo speaker. Could you do a demo speech, you know, to go along with speechcraft? Sure, no problem. So I started there. Well, I get to the end of that and I'm going, great, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Bye. And she said, you know, you'd be a really great contestant for the speech contest. I said, sure, I'd be delighted. I Whatever. And she said, well, you have to be a Toastmaster in order to be able to do that. <laughs> so in December of 2019, I joined heart to heart Toastmasters, and then eventually um, added Leaders Worldwide to that as well. And that was the beginning of my journey to Toastmasters. And that is, you know, everybody we've talked to, they all have their own separate story, so to speak. And finding out where you came from to Toastmasters is pretty, is pretty amazing. You know, the name of our, our podcast is called Speech Leading Grow, mm -hmm. and it's not by accident. And when you hear those when, mm -hmm. you, when you hear those three words, speech leading grow, what comes to mind when you think of Toastmasters? It's the I think it's the foundation for Toastmasters. Uh, we we talk to people about speaking and when we when we open new clubs and that kind of thing. We're always looking at where, where can you speak? Where do you speak? And what help can you, you know, what help do you need in order to be able to speak better? Do you talk to clients? Do you stand up in front of the board of directors? You know, where are you speaking? And then how can we assist you in that? And that I think is, I mean, it is the tenant of what we do in Toastmasters is that we teach people how to speak. We teach people how to put together a, a cogent uh, presentation and we give them feedback. We give them evaluations, which is not something you ever get in corporate. Well, you might, what you might get is thank you very much and goodbye. We're not going to buy what, what you have to offer leading because we don't just speak in the meeting itself, we have all these roles. And so you're taking on leadership roles every time you go to a meeting and you take a role. And again, it gives you that breadth of being able to do that in your own job, in your own life, whatever it might be. And growing, I mean, heck, you, you start out with, ooh, I have to do an icebreaker. Oh my God, why would they wanna listen to me to doing a DTM project? or a high performing leadership project and really showing your leadership, your ability to speak. Oh, and then you can also do contest, which is even a bigger stretch for people. You want me to compete? Ooh, I right. don't know. And yet it, it gives you that breadth of knowledge, understanding, and you're an even better employee parent. Uh, and if you do stuff out in the community as well. So I know that this is your, 
at least your second year in the district? Is it your second or third year? Uh, well, it depends on what you're talking about, Dean Marie. As Since a member of the trio. Oh, in the as a member of trio, I'm uh, number two. It's the second year. Yeah. So but, you are the program quality director this year. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. And what is the one thing that you are looking forward to or the most excited about in that role? There are so many training aspects within the program quality director role. I'm going to turn training on its ear. Uh oh. <laughs> we, we have always said clubs, bring your people into us and we will train them. Well, we have to do that for leadership training. So the club leaders, we couldn't do that the way we're doing what we want, what I want to do. So yes, we still have to bring them in. We still have to train them as groups and they're used to that. However, we have always done group training throughout the year on various topics, great topics, fantastic presentations. It's been wonderful, but nobody was coming. They came at the beginning of the year and then they got tired and they never came. And so I said, this year, we're going to take it out to you. Oh my goodness. So I have Carrie Kelly, who has taken on the role of doing in essence club training but how we're doing this is one we'll provide an open house speaker for you who'll speak on a topic of your choice we'll bring if you have an issue in your club and you'd really like training on it we will send a speakers bureau person an area director maybe a division director or maybe just somebody in another club who has really great experience in that particular realm and so one we're taking it to you Two, we're providing a top-notch speaker. For the speaker, not only do they get a chance to speak, because heck, oftentimes we're in clubs where I might there might be 30 members and I may speak once every three months. Well, I'm not gonna get through my paths that way. So this is a way for individuals to work through their pathways and get credit for it, as long as the club is willing to do an evaluation on them. Wow, that sounds exciting. And that is different. And it I is. Think it's probably net some really good returns. Well, you know, all along and every year we have this issue with membership, mm -hmm. getting people to join. Mm -hmm. How do you think that will play into that? And is that part of why it's designed that way? A couple of reasons. Yeah. I work very closely with the uh, club growth director, who in this case is Jeff uh, Young. And Jeff actually worked on my committee last year. So he has sort of a real sense of how we build clubs, how we um, charter new clubs and that kind of thing. And we want to um, really work with the clubs to increase membership. We wanna show them how in an open house, you can make sure that at the end of the open house, you've got applications filled out as opposed to saying, I'll get back in touch with you. Uh, yeah. We found that in chartering clubs, you can't do that. You want to walk out of that chartering meeting with 20 applications. Yes. And we've been successful in making that happen. That's exciting. That really is exciting because I, I agree with you. Alex? Yeah. I mean, as a, as a newer Toastmaster, it, it's always hard to understand the cult, so to speak. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I know. Because in most organizations, there's a lot of different um, acronyms, mm -hmm. DTM, CGD, da, 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 da. And you have to kind of get used to that. Right. So what do you think, I mean, you, you're saying all these wonderful things about what you want to do. What challenges have you seen in your years of Toastmasters that either have been resolved or that you want to try to get resolved? I think one of the really key challenges, and we're seeing it now because we're, we're recruiting district uh, division officers, area uh, people for our teams and that kind of thing, is first finding people who want to do this, who want to step outside of their club and really expand their experience. And that can be a challenge. Uh, many of them get very insular. Of, this is my club. This is where I am. This is what I do, as opposed to looking at the bigger picture of what's Toastmasters and what else can it do for me? Uh, and 
so that's been a challenge. I mean, I had a challenge last year in building my team, but I had some fantastic people and it made up for the fact that I didn't have numbers. This year in recruiting members for conference, conference is perfect for somebody who says, yeah, I'd like to stick my toe in the water and try a job. I don't want anything big. I don't want anything that lasts a full year, but something that's really in my bailiwick uh, is something that I've maybe done before, or I'd like to test and see if I can do that. I mean, I have people who bring in food, who do the post toasties, who do flowers, you know, that kind of thing. And it can be a test so that next year you can say, I'll take a bigger role this year. And I think that's been the biggest challenge is just getting people out of their clubs and recognizing that Toastmasters is more than just your club. Toastmasters is that area, that division, that district, and then you can go bigger and actually go into the international world. That's great. And, uh, you know, you've had so many different roles and doing some research. I know one of your passions, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is the speak is the Speakers Bureau. And I would love for you to kind of talk about the Speakers Bureau a little bit and how that actually works and what's the benefit of either being on the Speakers Bureau and what people, how the Speakers Bureau can help either Toastmasters or the public. A couple different ways, Alex, and I'm really excited about the Speakers Bureau. The key is you have to apply. Um, and there are some very, I don't want to say stringent uh, requirements, but there are requirements that you have to fulfill, including a, a three minute speech that we can put up on the site. And the, the really the cool thing is we have people from outside of Toastmasters who are looking for speakers. I got to speak for the Project Management Association because of the Speakers Bureau. And I think that's part of the the thing that's really, really key is it again, it gets you out of the club. It also gets you the benefits of what you've been doing in the club and the work that you've been doing to fine tune and hone your craft and that kind of thing. And eventually get to a place where you're actually getting paid for giving your presentation, giving your speeches, standing up on stages with 200, 300 people in the audience. Now we start a little bit smaller right now in the fact that uh, we're, we're actually going to use the Speakers Bureau people to go to the clubs and to be able to speak there. Again, we want to give them sort of that advertisement to get the people in D57 to know who they are, what they can do, and how they can help them not only in their clubs, in their areas or the districts, but also, hey, you can come speak at my company. We're having a, a business meeting or we're having some kind of a convention or we're, we're bringing in our clients and we would love a keynote speaker, what could you do for us? And I think that's going to really uptick the Speakers Bureau. Do you, so how does one apply for the Speakers Bureau? Is it a difficult process? Can newer Toastmasters try to apply? What what do you look for in a, in a Speaker Bureau speaker? That's a good question because the person who really should answer that question is Gary McKinsey. Um, okay. I am, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just a member of the Speakers Bureau. I know I click the button on, on that wonderful web page that says apply, and it will tell you everything that you need to do to be able to apply for the Speakers Bureau. And also what kind of experience did you need? Uh, what do you need to, um, you know, put up? Um, there's your application. Right. And wow. like I said, it, it, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. I, I know you have your experience and you know, just trying to encourage other Toastmasters to think outside of their comfort zone, think of side, outside of their club. Exactly. And, you know, just by doing this interview and getting more involved, I would have never had a chance to, to talk to someone like yourself or Sally or everybody else that's part of the bigger, bigger picture mm -hmm. that usually comes maybe once, once a year um at, at your club if that and it's nice to kind of understand that there is toastmasters just isn't that local meeting it's a lot more yeah uh, we're definitely not just a local meeting and alex I, to to show you what you can do 
if you're motivated. Okay. Unknown caller. Hello. Um, I, as I said, I started in 2019. I was just a club member. Then I became the treasurer, then the secretary. Then I moved, then Cynthia said, hey, you know, they're looking for a district finance manager. Could you do that? I was interviewed by Bet. I was the district finance manager for a year. From that, I then moved to the administrative office, the, excuse me, administrative manager. But I didn't stop that year with just that. I was the interim finance manager because we didn't have one. I had eight roles that year, by the way. Um, I was the <laughs> D district G uh, director. I had all three area directors because I didn't have any area directors. Luckily, I had two wonderful gentlemen who stepped in and took two of my areas, but I had eight jobs. Wow. And, so, you, still managed to, and you still managed to have a, a life? A life? Have. Yes. <laughs> to have a life, to have and a career what... <laughs> um, and all of that. So you don't have to go quite that big, but right. to know that there are opportunities to to test the waters, to be, be able to say, I'd like to go a little bit bigger. What would that look like? And I think the trio, all three of us are fantastic mentors, great at answering your questions of what, what could I do next? And to not just sit in your club and say, well, is this all there is? No, this is not all there is. I so do our one. goal by having the trio members to come and appear on our podcast is to introduce you to all the members oh yeah the seven so they can get comfortable with the fact that mm -hmm. oh my god i love what she said about this or that so you said one of your passions was the d57 speakers bureau mm -hmm. but i want to ask you about another passion okay if someone were to ask me i bet if i were to say to someone i bet you didn't know this about linda Patton. what would i <laughs> tell them what would i tell them Ooh. Um, One of your passions, whatever that might be. Well, I have a passion about horses, but that has nothing to do with Toastmasters. Uh, I think, to be honest with you, writing, uh, although I haven't done a lot of it recently because I've been, my husband, unfortunately, is uh, not well. And so I spend a great deal of time with him. I'm and sorry so my, my writing career has sort of been pushed to the side. But I am a best-selling author, number one best-selling author um, on Amazon, uh, also an international best-selling author. I've got, I think Amazon has 12 books on it that I have written about leadership. I'm passionate about that. I love talking to people about it. I coined a whole new word for leadership. Uh, we talk about um, command. Well, you have us waiting. You have us yeah. waiting. We talk about command, okay. which is the masculine. Sorry, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be gender biased as well. It's the masculine side. It's the telling side of leadership. It's where I started. I was in the military. Uh, I retired as a major. And then I thought, but there's got to be a softer side to this. What about the feminine side? So there's the influence side, which is the feminine side. Well, that's great. But the two of them apart are not as powerful as when you bring them both together and you're able to flux between them, depending upon the, the situation and what you need to do uh, and who the people are and what, what the challenge is and that kind of thing. And I think that's probably my biggest passion is to teach more people, get them to experience that power between taking the two of those and bringing them together and really being an exceptional leader. Wow. Well, I, I will say this, um, being someone that, you know, I was not in the military, but I've been involved with the military through my career and family and everything else. It, leadership is, is something that you can, you either have or you don't, but you can create in some ways. And I think nowadays more than ever, people want to be the boss but they don't want to be a leader. Yes. And there's a difference. And, mm -hmm. you know, it makes more sense now why you are passionate about Toastmasters. And what I'd love for you to talk about is how your leadership slash Toastmasters 
can be so important for businesses to either start a club or have their junior or possibly even senior members join clubs because at the end of the day, we don't want to write. We want to articulate ourselves mm -hmm. and every word counts. So can you just talk about your experience militarily and leadership and how that can apply into the business world when it comes to Toastmasters? Obviously, my background in the military gives me a really firm grip on command. I was um, the officer that stood on the parade field and commanded 2,000 people to turn out as one. That's command. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, it is. Um, I had a, a training company. I had six platoons of 30 women each. And what I like to say is we took them from being able to dress them all the way to they left us in six weeks and we started all over again. Can you imagine in your business if you had to do that? And I was talking to bankers and I said, you know, open a branch and you had to bring in all the people. You decided you want them all in uniform. You taught them everything they needed to do. And six weeks later, they left you. You got to do it all over again. It's a very powerful kind of leadership, but I found that also asking questions and dealing with the, I don't wanna say softer side, but definitely asking questions was key that you needed to be able to involve people to get them in, into finding out what's, what's important for them and that kind of thing. And so Toastmasters gives you, again, the ability to practice without consequence so you can practice your telling style. You can practice your asking style and you can practice them as a blended style. I use it with my uh, Toastmasters team. I use it when I'm on a phone call with someone. I ask a lot of questions and I get a lot of really interesting answers. I think from a business perspective, teaching people how to lead and how to speak in a manner that gets your point across in a way that people will hear it. Because oftentimes we've got a great message, but nobody ever hears it. And Absolutely. Toastmasters gives you that because you get the feedback. You get the feedback in your evaluations that said, well, that was interesting, but. And also it allows you to do it again, to modify it, to change it and to continue to get feedback until you get to a point where it's doing what you want it to do. Do you want, are you a salesperson? You want that sales message to generate sales and to get your team, your club to be able to say to you, you know, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy that. And by the, by the way, that says club growth director. All right. So yes, P, um, PQD. Instead of CG, CGD, it should be PQD. Did I do that? No. You did that. I didn't do that. <laughs> Alex did that. But let oh, me I ask you this that. while he's taking care of that, Linda. Yes, you thank you. You beautifully how Toastmasters can figure into the business arena, into mm -hmm. the office setting, corporate setting. You talked about the bank, which was cute. But I want to know, do you take those same skills or those same objectives and apply them to the individual? who joins a club for the first time, coming in saying, oh my goodness, I get my knees get to knocking and I, my hands are sweaty. I just can't do this. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I can't speak in front of people. What particular kind of thing can you do with that new member to give them a sense of calm that they can accomplish it and it's not as bad as it seems? Oftentimes we start with table topics. You know, it's a little one to two minute speech and oftentimes we're asking them about themselves. Even in our chartering meetings, we do table topics, but we give them basically a sheet beforehand that said, are you interested? And we list all these things that Toastmasters does. We don't say that, but all these things that Toastmasters does that works in the business world. And we ask them to, you know, check off those things that you want to be able to do better or to learn how to do. And then in the table topics, we ask them, so what was your number one thing off that list? 
and why? Well, if they can speak for one to two minutes on something like that, where they're not prepared, they're not, uh, you know, they haven't had a chance to practice it or anything else. It's just off the cuff. And at the end they go, gee, I can do this. And so then we expand it so that they do, you know, like a three to five minute speech, uh, their icebreaker. Icebreaker, you're talking about yourself. You're talking about something in your life that you want your club to know about. So we're not stepping out of their comfort zone. And as they move through the various paths, they get more and more experience and they get to a place where they're comfortable speaking. They get an evaluation. They might take that same speech and modify it and bring it back and do it again. And that's, I think, the power of Toastmasters is that you're not one and done. You're continuously evolving. I mean, my, my contest speech years, well, in 2020, uh, I worked it. I worked it. I, okay, I'm going to tell you something that most people don't know. My grandmother, when I was five years old, um, went to a presentation that I did of the night before Christmas. I had the first many lines and I did great, but I got to the last two lines and I couldn't remember what they were. So I looked at my coach and she gave me, she mouthed what those two, two lines were. And I did them and I was done and I bowed and I said, thank you so very much. <laughs> Stepped back. Well, at the end, my mom and dad came up and, oh, Linda, you were so great. It was fantastic. Thank you. So, oh, you know, awesome. And I see way back in the corner is my grandmother and she's got her arms crossed. <laughs> so I ran up and I go, grandma, 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 how did I do? And she looked at me and she goes, Linda and Frank, you should never stand up in front of groups of people and talk. You are just not good at it. And with that, she walked away. I carried that with me through grade school, high school, college, and even into the military, although the military, I began to break through it. And then I wear Nyla. Uh, Nyla sits on my shoulder and she reminds grandma that I am an exceptional speaker and I can stand up in front of groups of people and talk. So what I say to, to the folks that I'm coaching, if I can do this, you can do this. That was a phenomenal story. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. I think Thank that you. would encourage any new club member to just just do it. Just yep. get out there and do it. Alex. Now, now, Linda, you said you coach people, correct? I do. Okay. So I have another friend of mine who's a Toastmaster or former Toastmaster. And what he tells people um, is, because he'll get people from the business world, hey, coach me, coach me, coach me. And they're like, I'm going to save you some money. Go to Toastmasters, get your basic, your bases, mm -hmm. and then to me, and then we can work. Yes. Because it takes so much time. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the passions I know DeMarie has, and I know you were talking about training, is Pathways. And mm -hmm. I would love for you to kind of talk about your experience with Pathways. How, how did that help you? And I know I stole a little of Dee Marie Thunder because she's my Pathways person, but I would love for you to get give give us your take on the Pathways system, its positives, and and what whatever else you want to give us. I like the Pathways process, uh, the fact that it's online. There are some things that we're playing with and at Toastmasters at a higher level that I think will make it even better. But what I love is the fact that you progress, that you learn different things. You learn, you can pick uh, speeches that are important to you, important to your job, important to your work, whatever it might be. So you're not, in essence, carved in concrete. You have to do these speeches, um, except for level one and level two. And for the most part, those are the same across the different paths. But your emphasis can be different the story that you tell can be different. And I think that's the power of Pathways is that even though you're gonna do an icebreaker, great, but I can do 15 different icebreakers. I can do 15 different vocal variety and gestures. 
I don't have to do the same speech over and over and over again. So oftentimes it can relate to something that I'm doing in my job. And I think that's the power behind it. Um, you pick your path and you tailor your presentations to that path and to what you want to get out of it. And I think, again, I think that that versatility and that flexibility really gives you the ability to grow, to go deeper and to really take it into your, your job and the work world that you do uh, and get that experience. Uh, the, uh, we have challenges with pathways. I've gone through uh, most of the paths since 2019. Um, so I, uh, yeah, again, I'm one of these people that you give, you give me a path and I'm gone. Uh, so I have, I have a couple that I don't, I don't like engaging humor because what I usually say to people is, look, I don't do humor, but if I say something funny that you think is funny, please laugh as loud as you can so that I know I told a joke. And yeah. so, yeah, so I haven't, I haven't engaged humor yet, but I know that that's one that I still need to do. You also have the ability to do um, a Distinguished Toastmasters award, and you have to do two paths in order to be able to move through that. So we give you the ability to get deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Overall, I think it's it's a good process of giving people the experience that they need in order to be successful as a Toastmaster, as an employee, as a boss, as a father, mother, because you learn how to talk to your kids as well, which is you know, a powerful thing to be able to do, how to ask questions, how to get responses, those kinds of things. So I, I like the Pathways program. I also like the, the paper product that we used to have, the manuals. And one of my team members, Ashley Harkness, has them all in his garage. <laughs> and what he says to people is, you know, if you don't know what to do in a particular path, here, I've got a, I've got a manual or I've got some speech ideas here that might be valuable for you. So I think we have to embrace the fact that we have old technology, but that it still is very relevant with the new technology. So just, that's the point that I wanted to touch on as well. You yeah. talked about uh, Ashley having all those manuals yeah. in his garage. The yeah. thing that I have found so exciting about Toastmasters is that there's always someone ready to lend a helping hand. Oh, yeah. And it's a safe place. Speak to that, please. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I mean, t Ashley has been my mentor through my entire career. He, he met me. I think even before I joined Toastmasters, we, we no, it was a contest. Um, and we went out for coffee and we got to talking. And he said, you know, you're going to be the international president one day. I don't think so, but that's his goal for me. And everything he does is to educate me and to give me the experiences that I need in order to be able to continue to move up in the Toastmasters world. Um, I may decide that I'm too old but I haven't gotten to that place yet. And he's so willing to share his experiences. I love the fact that he does the keynote speeches for all of my chartering meetings. And he talks about why I'm still a Toastmaster. And that story alone is worth the price of admission because people go, oh, because he started in his company and he had a Toastmasters come to him and say, you need Toastmasters because you're going to be X. And he was. And he's he's just phenomenal. And he's willing to share everything. He actually found, I'm going into Jeff's, Jeff's world, but he found an old DVD from Cassandra Cockrell about how to do a chartering meeting. This was a yes. DVD. And it is one of the most powerful DVDs I have ever seen. And we use it to train officers on, this is what we need to do a chartering meeting. And it's worked. We chartered four clubs. Jeff's gonna have two that'll charter by August. And you, it's gold. 
just absolute gold. That's, that's amazing. And we're speaking with Linda Patton, the new PQD uh, for District D District Fifty Seven, um, and I, I just, I just, this is really fascinating because not knowing any of you folks, meaning the trio, and not knowing a lot of the people in the district, every single person has a story. And it's just amazing to kind of find out where you're, where you're coming from, because mm -hmm. we all are coming from a different place. You know, I, I love the fact that you're trying to be as progressive as you can by using the past to go forward. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. We're in an age where technology, 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 that's all well and good. But if the message is crap, it's called crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and yeah. I, I think I think that's the biggest thing that I'm finding from everybody that we've we've talked to is that it's really about the message. Uh, now, saying that, um, what other I mean, I love the fact also that you want people to speak at different clubs, mm -hmm. because I think there's a there's a lack of when you're when you're getting the same evaluations from everybody. It's kind of like, OK, he's going to talk about whatever and he's going to have his laugh there and his laugh there. And, and, and it's great, but you need to always have a fresh eye. Mm -hmm. And as an as an older Toastmaster, what would you give advice to the older Toastmaster? Because we always talk about what do you give the advice for the new Toastmaster? How do we get those older Toastmasters in years, not in age, to really get enthusiastic about Toastmasters and want to mentor? Because people kind of get into the rut. Ooh, that's a tough question. I firmly believe that, you know, to be a well-rounded Toastmaster, it's not just doing speaking roles in your club. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Ashley actually started this last year with uh, Champagne Toastmasters, asking them because they, they were very well-run club, would you be willing to, I don't want to say mentor, but if I, I sent people from other clubs in, would you be willing to you know, have a conversation with them, answer questions uh, as far as why you're so successful and that kind of thing? And it worked really, really well because I think we get, we get insular. We're, we're so involved with our own club, we don't see the bigger picture. We don't see where else we might be able to go. I love the fact that clubs will do a joint meeting. Um, the clubs in, in what used to be Division G up in the northern part of California, I love the fact that they would get together and they do a joint meeting. So you get a chance to see different people, get evaluations from different people and, and that kind of thing. For the experienced Toastmaster, I want them to get outside of their club. Otherwise, okay, I'm, I'm going to be totally non-political. Um, I don't like to see what I call hot tub chapters, clubs, where their entire purpose is just to have coffee and breakfast with their group. And they're not really looking at Toastmasters in the bigger picture. Where else might be I be able to help? What other clubs might I be able to come into and just give a speech? Um, might I be able to mentor a club that's in trouble? Might I be able to show them how to bring in new members, how to orient them, how to train them so that they want to stay and they want to continue with their Toastmasters journey? I think we lose a lot of our new members because we ignore them. We bring them in, we get the numbers, and then, and maybe they do their icebreaker speech and then it's, then it's, we're done. As opposed to, let me, let me show you how you do your next speech. And really having a mentor for each of the new members and someone who is actually going to mentor them as opposed to just in name only. And I think that's a, it's critical for us as an organization, if we're going to continue to learn and grow and to be viable in this world. Um, I will not speak on, on us going all the way back to be in person only. We can't. We have 
close that door. We have too many clubs that have folks from Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia, across the country. I mean, Dee Marie, you and I are on the Midwest Ops and the East Coast. Sides. Yes, opposite sides. I'm on the East Coast myself, so. Exactly. Absolutely. And we couldn't do this without. Absolutely. We could not do true. this if, if yeah. we, I wouldn't even be talking. Exactly. Talking. Um, so I think it's, it, it's, I don't want to say it's criminal, but it is that I, I, I love the fact that I could get into a room and be able to, to I want to say touch the, the rest of the membership, but we have these very valuable people. Oftentimes many of your officers are on Zoom because they're elsewhere or even in the state of California, I may decide, you know, when I lived in Walnut Creek, I may decide that I wanted a club in Eureka. Well, yes. I tell you, I am not gonna drive up to Eureka every week to go to that club meeting, but I really like the people, I like what they're doing, I, you know, that kind of thing. So I think in some respects, the pandemic actually was a good thing for us in the fact that we truly became an international organization. Well, I think of all the different nonprofit organizations, this lends itself the best mm -hmm. for Zoom. Oh yeah. Because it's speaking, it's just trying to get in front of a audience. And I, and I think, you know, that's one of the reasons I, I joined the club that I did. And I think that, yeah, it is something special. Um, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have uh, any final questions? Oh, my goodness. I just want to thank you so very much, Linda. You have given us such a tremendous, rich amount of information that well, we can just you. embrace and use as we move forward and increase our membership. And we have committed ourselves on Speak, Lead and Grow, our podcast this year, to assist in any way that we can to help clubs increase their membership. And one of the ways to do that, since we're going to ask everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're going to be on YouTube. And anyone that looks at that will get a chance to tune in and listen to all the nuggets that you've given in terms of how the new member can move in and move up with Toastmasters, how it's a safe place. We evaluate you, but we don't bruise you and try to beat you up. We try to help you to move to the next level. So I think all of those tidbits and those tips that you gave were just phenomenal. So thank you so much for joining us today. So very welcome. And do you all give them like my contact information? So that, well, I'd be more than willing to have people send me an email, send me a text. Please don't call. Yeah, we can definitely um, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it's not a problem. I, I, I just, I'm just very thankful that we got a chance to have this time together. Just I am because thank you. learn a little bit more about someone like yourself. Um, and it makes sense. You know, I, I used to work for the Red Cross and now I'm still a, that's how I make my living. Work? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a CPR. I was, a, I worked for the Red Cross oh, as okay. a worker and I'm my own youth program, but then I also teach CPR and first aid for a living. So have you, I, done, have you done a youth program, a Toastmasters youth program? I have a hard enough time. Yeah, it's called my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to deal with my six-year-old daughter right now. But um, that all being said, before you strong arm me into something else, I don't have time to do. Uh, I, you know, it just makes sense that someone as organized as you are being from the military environment, it makes sense that you're in this position and all the positions that you've taken. Because I know it's not easy to make the hard decisions, especially mm -hmm. at the level that you're at, both professionally and whatever this is, voluntarily, <laughs> if you're yeah. voluntary life. I, I know you're rolling your eyes because it seems like it's a full-time oh. job. Yes. But, um, it, you know, I, I think Toastmasters is at, a, as, is at a real crossroads like a lot of other volunteer organizations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people may call it old school or, or, or dated or whatever else. But again, I keep going back to the fact that being able to speak and speak well is probably more important now than it is the written word. Not exactly. that the written word isn't important because it is but more people are speaking than ever before. And I think, you know, 
you're you're proving the fact that training and having a plan and being involved makes a better not only toastmaster but a better person absolutely and I, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time for for us and really for people who are going to watch this whether they are toastmasters or thinking about toastmasters but absolutely. um you know de marie why don't you uh tell everybody how they can get in touch with us because i know you have your uh your script right Yes, you can follow us by going to d57tm.org. And you can also look us up on YouTube. We are excited about this year that we're going to be spending as podcast co host Alex and myself are determined to keep you informed, to keep you engaged, and to introduce you to some of the phenomenal people that work in and around District 57. So we're glad to have you with us. And thank you again so very much, London. Oh, absolutely. And I'd gladly come back. <laughs> and okay, that's anytime, great. Anytime you're ready, we are willing. And again, thank you so much for listening, folks. My name is Alex. And I'm Dean Marie. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.